From mogul to president, one thing has remained a subject of intrigue and debate, Donald Trump's iconic hair. Is it real? Did he get a hair transplant? It's actually much more complicated than that and a great example of how hair restoration surgery has evolved over time. Dive in with me as I unravel the mysteries of Trump's trademark hair. Here's Donald Trump at age four. And what I wanted to point out here is where his hair naturally parts on the left side. And what a natural part means is that that is where the hair changes direction. And while you can artificially create a part anywhere along your hairline, there is a place where that directional split naturally occurs. In 1964, at the age of 18, you can see that Donald's hairline part is still on the left side, but he's choosing to comb it over to the right. He has a widow's peak right in the center there of the hairline and he has early slight frontotemporal recession. Before we go on looking at Donald Trump's hair, I wanted to point out his father's hair. In the 1970s and 1980s, you can see the fairly deep recession that his father had. But you can see that in the 90s, Trump Sr. has a lower hairline, and you'll see the relevancy of that later in this video. In 1976, at the age of 30, the exact degree of recession is difficult to assess because now the hair is being combed onto the forehead. In in doing so, Donald Trump is able to conceal the frontotemporal corners. In 1978, at the age of 32, what I see here is that the architecture of Donald Trump's hairline has changed significantly compared to him at age 18. The hairline is now much straighter, it's lower, and it appears to be less natural. And if you look closely, you'll see what appears to be small islands of hair. I believe that he may have had a procedure which involved plug grafts. Plug grafts were first popularized in the 1950s by Dr. Norman Orentreich in New York City. He would essentially take four millimeter size punches from the back of the head and move those islands of hair to the front of the scalp typically and suture close the donor sites. But these islands that were moved were not the follicular units of today. They were much bigger. Currently, for FUE technique, for example, we have usually about a 0.8 millimeter to maybe a 1.0 millimeter punch size. Compare that to the four millimeter punch sizes of the past. When these larger islands of hair were moved, they appeared less natural, giving almost a doll's hair type of appearance. In 1979, at the age of 33, you can see that it's almost like his entire forehead is being covered by hair. And part of the reason for that is that the hair plugs have been placed low. In 1980, at the age of 34, I wanted to highlight the horizontal thirds of the face. And as you guys know from my other videos, we talk about how the horizontal thirds of the face classically should be relatively equal in height. But as you see in this image, the top third of Donald Trump's face is now significantly shorter compared to the middle third and the lower third. And this is especially true as you look back at how he was at age 18. You know, when I have consultations with patients, they'll often ask me, like, why should I choose you? There's so many people in New York City and you know around the world that do hair transplants. And what I often say is, you definitely want to find someone who's an artist and not just someone who does hair transplant surgery. An artist will be able to properly configure a hairline as far as positioning goes that fits your face appropriately. You want somebody who understands facial proportions and general aesthetics. In 1981, at the age of 35, you can again see the pluggy appearance of the hairline and you can see the orientation of the hairline being straight across. In 1982, at the age of 36, the plugs are still visible. And you can see that as we zoom in on the left side of the hairline. In 1985, at the age of 39, in addition to the procedures that we have already discussed and what we will be discussing, Donald may have also been on finasteride around this time. Finasteride is what allows us to preserve our hair. It won't necessarily lead to a lot of hair growing back, but it does help protect what we have. And that's a very important part of hair restoration. To find out more about finasteride and other hair restoration medical therapies, head to feelconfident.com. In 1991, at the age of 45, what I see here is that the left frontotemporal corner looks different with some scarring visible at the part line. Now, perhaps Donald may have wanted to cover up the hairline plugs. 
and a new popular technique was emerging in Beverly Hills around that time. I believe that Donald Trump may have had a rotational flap from the left side. Let me explain what that means. First described in 1975 by Yuri as the temporoparieto occipital scalp flap, it was later popularized in the United States by Fleming and Mayer in Beverly Hills in the 1980s. A flap operation relocates large areas of dense growing hair. You can use this technique to create a complete hairline in the shortest period of time compared to other surgical options. And each flap has about 6,000 to 10,000 follicular units. And some of the results that I've seen are truly impressive, especially for patients that are Norwood 6 and 7. The flap is based on the temporal artery and its connections to the retroauricular and the occipital arteries. These flaps come in two different varieties. One is pedicled and the other one is a free flap. The pedicled flap, as it's rotated in, has hair growing in the posterior direction at the hairline, so the scar becomes more visible. Flaps can be performed from either side if more coverage is needed, and areas of alopecia in between those flaps can be removed, and this is what's called a scalp reduction. And some people online have speculated that Donald Trump may have had a scalp reduction, but I believe that it was most likely in combination with one of these flap procedures. The risks of these rotational flaps are poor scarring and potential flap necrosis, which occurs at least partially in 4 to 5% of cases, even in expert hands. So these bigger procedures do have bigger risks. In 1992, at the age of 46, even though Donald may have brought in a fresh supply of hair to the hairline, he's still combing it down, and this might be to hide the scar. Also notice here that the hairline height has been further lowered, shrinking down the upper third even more. Going back to Donald Trump's father, you can see that he may have had a similar procedure around this same time. And notice the scar at his hairline, as the flap was most likely pedicled, therefore giving it the posterior direction of hair growth and increased visibility to the scar. In 1993, at the age of 47, it is difficult to tell if he may have had a second flap from the right side with or without a scalp reduction because he overall has good coverage in the mid scalp and the crown areas. In 2002, at the age of 56, it looks to me like Donald Trump's hairline is now more robust. The right temple and the right frontotemporal area appear more concealed. Now, it's possible that he may have had an FUT procedure around this time. FUT was first described in 1995, but it was the most popular method around this time in 2002. Remember that FUT surgery involves taking a strip from the back of the head and dissecting that under the microscope to get follicular units, and then taking those follicular units and placing them as these mini or micrographs at the hairline or other places that might need additional hair. This can be done to help conceal scars and also to increase the overall density of an area. In 2003, at the age of 57, you can see the significant boost to Donald's hairline, but also the forehead is now nearly completely covered by hair. In 2004, at the age of 58, what I see here is that when you look at the posterior perspective on the left-hand side, there is a scar pattern that's consistent with the rotational flap that I previously described. As we superimpose a rotational flap design onto what we're seeing here with Donald Trump's hair, you can start to appreciate that perhaps this is where the flap originated. In 2009, at the age of 63, I'm starting to see some frontal scalp thinning. And again, given that the hair is being combed posterior and it's covering up a lot of the mid scalp and crown, it's more difficult to assess those areas. In 2011, at the age of 65, the frontal scalp again is starting to look more full. And it's possible that he may have had an FUE surgery around this time. FUE surgery involves taking out hair from the back of the scalp, similar to FUT, but this time with individual punches that are made and scattered throughout a donor area. FUE was described in 2002, 
but became more popular around 2010, and it continues to be the most popular extraction method today. In 2012, at the age of 66, the way that the hair lifts in the wind from the front may be a reflection of that original rotational flap. In 2018, at the age of 72, we see some images of scarring, and that scar that's visible on the left may be related to that suspected rotational flap. But on the right side, there's also a visible scar. And the way that his hair flops in this video, it looks to me like he might have had a right-sided rotational flap in the past as well. Historically, those were sometimes done one to two months apart. You can do a left-sided flap for the more anterior portion of the hairline, and then after a few months, a flap from the contralateral side was used further back to add further density to the frontal and mid scalp. And then the area in between those two flaps was further reduced with a scalp reduction procedure. And this can all help explain the complex combing that's involved in getting Donald Trump's hair to look the way that it usually does. So to summarize the potential procedures that I think Donald Trump may have had on his hair, let's start with punch grafts in the 1970s, followed by a left rotational flap in around 1991 with a subsequent possible right-sided rotational flap around the same time. Then an FUT procedure in 2002 and an FUE procedure in 2011. Now you see what I meant by this is a complex case. And now let's go over some takeaway lessons from this case study. Even people who become presidents are bothered by hair loss. Recreating natural hairlines is key to long-term successful outcomes. And I have a video on how I like to create natural hairlines for my patients, so make sure to check that one out. Naturality comes from proper hairline positioning, density, irregularity, angle and direction. Scars can give us some clues into the type of procedures that may have been done. Older forms of hair restoration actually do have some merit in certain circumstances, and it's not like the latest treatments are always the best. I've seen some incredible results from rotational flaps and larger FUT surgeries that were done very well. It's not always about the latest techniques, but how your surgeon artistically and safely does these procedures.